Hey, it's Matt with Rebel here. Today, I'm going to show you how you can implement user authentication very simply in Streamlit. Hey, it's Matt with Rebel here. Today, I'm going to show you how you can enable user authentication in your Streamlit apps in only a couple of lines with Replit Auth. Now, what is Replit Auth? Well, in a nutshell, it's a way of authenticating users to your application using your Replit account. You can think about it a bit like Google authentication. If you've ever clicked sign in with Google on a website, this is exactly the same thing, but we're using your Replit account instead of your user account. Why would you want to do this? Well, in the case of Streamlit, maybe you're a data analyst or a data scientist, and you built a really cool dashboard, really cool visualization, or even like some reports that your finance team needs to see. Well, that's sensitive data, and you need to control who has access to those reports. Using um, the team members' Replit accounts, if they sign up for Replit, you can whitelist their Replit usernames to be sure you know exactly who has access to those dashboards. Now, another really cool feature is that if you're using Replit Teams, we're going to um, expose the Replit Teams team name to those accounts. So if you have a Ender Replit Teams is our enterprise product, if you're a, a member of the same team, you could just allow all members in that Replit team. Um, and then you don't have to worry about adding people as they leave or join your team. Um, similarly, you could customize the um, output of the dashboard based on the team. So maybe you have a dashboard, maybe you're in human resources and you want to show you know, customer service metrics, uh, hiring metrics to your customer service reps, and you want to show hiring metrics for your analytics team to your analytics uh, members, right? Um, you could say, hey, for the members of the analytics team, show this. For the members of the customer service team, show that, right? You could do that. And we're going to show you how to do it. Let's jump right into it, and we'll get this one done. So I have a Streamlit app here that's running on Replit. If I click Run, we're just going to execute this one. And what I've done is enabled Replit Auth. Um, and so... The way you do that is you go to the authentication pane. Once you click enable, you're going to get this page that says you have to be logged in. Um, but we haven't actually you know, added any checks. So once I log in, the page is just going to load as usual. Now you're saying like, okay, you know, big, big whoop, like what, what's the difference? Now I'm going to uncomment this block of text and we're going to rerun the page. Now we're getting, hey, Matt, you're not authorized to, to use this application. One Number one, how did it know my name, right? Well, you can see I'm saying if username not in ST session state, ST session state username equals st.context.headers xreplit username. Um, now, there are a bunch of different headers like this. So we have xreplit username, replit user team. What we can actually do, we'll do a, a little investigation here. We'll print uh, the ST context headers just so we can see all the headers. We'll cast it to a dictionary and rerun. Okay, cool. Now we can kind of see what we got, what we're working with here. So if we could go down here. You can see we have our Replit user URL, um, Replit user teams. So again, this was kind of the teams example I was mentioning. You could add in the Replit teams the user is a member of the Replit user profile image. So now you could customize and add the the profile image of the user as well as the bio. So there's actually quite a lot of stuff in, a in addition to the user ID. There's a quite a lot of stuff that you could do here. And now, you know, one of the cool things about Replit is if you spun up a Postgres database, for example, and then started storing information in the database, it could be really customizable. It could be really cool. So um, that could be interesting. But what I want to talk about here, right, is this example is where I'm saying, hey, if, if st.session state username is not in the allowed user IDs, you can imagine doing allowed user teams as well. We're going to say, hey, you're not authorized to view this application. Um, otherwise, we're not going to print that error message. But all I have to do here is add my username, which is Matt, rerun the app, and now I don't see that. So just like that, we're using Replit Auth. It's actually coming in through the headers. So any framework um, you know that has access to the request headers, which pretty much every, every single framework, whether that's Python or Node or any language, does, and I also have videos on how to use this with Flask and Node, um, you'll be able to implement this in a very straightforward way. And, you know, it can be confusing, it can be intimidating, but there's a lot of information in our docs. Hopefully, I broke it down for you here. And I'm going to share this template with you so you can just get started from here. Um, but I'm Matt with Replit. This has been how you can add Replit Auth to any application you're running and deploying on Replit with Streamlit. Until next time, peace.